looking for Mika because Mika was going hard for uh Kamala Harris. And then after yesterday, she wasn't nowhere to be found. Call her, what's the name? Where you calling from? Somebody check on Mika. Peace. Uh, um, I'm calling from Florida. I don't want to say my name due to the question that I want to ask you, brothers. Okay. Um, God damn. Uh, what the question is that? Well, uh, I had a loved one that was murdered. Mm. And come to find out, it was, you know, at the hands of like three of his friends. So I'm calling to ask you, what, what recourse do I have? What does scripture say that would be permissible for me to do? Scripture says that vengeance is the Lord. Right. It, and, and as as much as I completely understand you wanting justice. Right. You got to understand a handful of things. Right. Um, what type of lifestyle was he living? He was in a gang. You know, he's stupid. You know? So, but, you know, so f from from saying that and, and, and by the way, I, I, I am sorry for your loss. That there's a handful of things that I have to say that is is not only going to be the truth that some of them are going to be hard pills to swallow. One of them is scripture says the wages of sin is death. You know mm. And and when we live that lifestyle, that's why that there's death all around us. That's why all of us got friends that we buried brothers. You know what I'm saying? Doing numbers in the football, it, doing football numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like on, on the other side of the wall. And that's what equates, you understand, to to that type of lifestyle. Now, what you what you have yeah. to realize is you have to be strong enough to understand that the Lord will give you justice if you serve him. You understand and that nobody hits hard. I strive to, man. I strive. The hard thing is when I was young, I was in that lifestyle. You know, I used to be I in a gang. I used to run, do wild shit, and I changed my life. You know, I'm not with that no more. I strive to live righteously. But everybody that knows my, me and my loved one, they're all looking at me. You know what I mean? Because they're like, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? I've even had people call me like, what's up? Let's, you know, I'm ready. I got this for you. We can do this. Let me know. And I don't want to I don't want to have to do that. You know what I mean? But if it, 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 it's just hard, man. Right. So you, now okay, okay. I'm sorry. Good. No, 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 please, sir. So now you say all your friends are calling you saying they got this for you, that for you. Right. Yeah, yeah, they want vengeance. What's, you know what I mean? And, and wait, wait, one second though. What's the end result of that? Nothing, an eye for an eye. No, the end result of that is you'll end up just like the relative that you just lost. Let me read the scripture for you, right? This is Proverbs 1 and 15. It says, My son, I'm sorry. Um, Proverbs 1 and 10 says, My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not, right? Now you wanted your this is what relative is this a cousin of yours or nephew? No, nah, it's my it's, it was actually my older brother. Okay, so your older brother that passed away because he lived a gang lifestyle, you got out of the gang lifestyle. Do you know who is enticing you right now? Sin Ooh. sinners are enticing you. If you yeah. if you actually want to stop the cycle of death, you live for your brother. You do not die for your brother. Because yeah. either you're going to die or go in jail, and then your life for your family. Are y'all the only two brothers, or you have other brothers? Yeah, we were the only two. So now, are you going to be the one that goes to jail or dies, and then your family doesn't get to see your line live? Or are you yeah. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. yeah. You know what's crazy? I, like, years ago, I had a dream that he passed away and I was at his funeral. And because of that fear, that fear was always in me. And I always, we live in different States. We grew up together in New York and then we moved together to Maryland. And then I moved away and I'm in Florida now. And I always would try to convince him, come down here, yo. Cause the personality he has mm -hmm. had and the kind of person he was, I knew he would thrive over here. And that dream always stayed in my head of him, me visiting him in this funeral. You know, and I used to always, but he would tell me he had kids over there. So he's like, I can't leave my kids, man. I'm like, please come up here. And when his baby mother called me and said, yo, sit down. I got something to tell you. They found him behind some dumpsters. And then I started making phone calls. And then within an hour, I found out everything that happened before the police did. Everybody told me everything. that I, I knew everything that went down. My three brothers are supposed to be his brothers. And that's the hardest shit to take because, oh, man. 
And so what you got to realize, I just want to read the rest of this for you, right? And then I'll, I'll give you some counsel. It says, if they say, come, let, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up as alive as the grave and whole as that go down to the pit. Verse 15 says, my son, walk now thou with them and refrain from them. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain is the net spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. So you can go out there and listen to these sinners that want you to end up just like your brother. Unfortunately, that's not a lifestyle that many brothers and sisters recover from. And, yeah. you know, and I, I, I pray. And here's the one thing that your brother has that you can take comfort in. Whatever was keeping him in that gang life, he has rest from that now. He don't have to mm. have that fight no more. You know, those brothers yeah. that betrayed the Lord, like when Kadazar said, vengeance is mine, you got to mm. now put that hand in the hand of the Lord. If you decide to... That's hard, yo. That's hard. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> That's easier said than done, man, especially to know, you know what I mean, to know all the details and to know who these dudes are and to know that they're over here no. enjoying their families is difficult to handle man yeah but you know what it'd be more difficult to handle your brother gone and then you in jail for taking vengeance and then getting caught you're not gonna get away with it so you'll just be the brother that goes to jail for taking vengeance for your brother you got family out yeah i do so now you would tell your brother to stop being in the gang so that he can take care of his family right yeah so now, that's the thing. I reach out to his kids. Like right. his son, his son is in prison and he's in the gang. And we write each other. He writes me from prison, and I write him. I tell him, "Yo, get out of that lifestyle, man." Right. So who's gonna but, stop? You know, the so who's gonna stop the cycle? Because if you yeah. take vengeance, you know who don't have a father. Your children don't have a father. So now two families. So now two families are destroyed over a gang life that you know is wrong. Go on deep. You understand? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I want to I wanna commend you on this front. I, you know what I'm saying? Because you didn't take counsel among sinners. You understand? Like, like yeah. you called, you understand, men of God. Let me tell you something. I've been uh, thinking about calling you brothers. This is something that I've been thinking about calling you brothers for for years. I've been watching you brothers for years. I even corresponded with both of y'all briefly. Like, I corresponded with Captain um, Tazari Elk on text. And you... Send me the 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 prayer. I, I hit you up on Facebook and you send me the prayer. Me and you spoke a couple of times. So I know you brothers and I love General Yohanna. I love ISUPK. I'm not a, a Israelite. I'm if I was, I'd be a so called Ephraimite. But I love brothers. I, I you know I watch y'all all the time. And one thing I know, you brothers know the Bible. So when I look for advice, I'm gonna come to y'all because I know I'm gonna get the best advice when it comes to that scripture. So that's why I called y'all. But it was just something that was weighing on my heart. For years this happened this isn't some recent it happened a couple years ago but you know I, I always wanted to call you guys and get your take on it because some sometimes i could deal with it and sometimes i can't i'm going through depression you know what i mean i i, I can't sleep you know it, it's tearing me up you know? it tears me up so listening to what you brothers told me and the, the scriptures you gave me i'm gonna read i'm gonna go back and replay this and i'm gonna take it to heart and I love you, brothers, you know, for your counsel, no doubt. We, we love you, too. I'm just going to part, the, the part with these words just to reiterate something Captain Zayak said. If you have faith in the Most High, you got to have faith. You understand that he's going to give you the justice that you want. Otherwise, you taking the justice into your own hands is saying that you don't believe the Lord will give you justice, number one. Number two, all of that is, is really for naught. If you don't, you understand, turn your life over to the Lord and lead by an example to be able to lead people out of that lifestyle. And then lastly, I believe you're on that path just from the phone call, because I promise you, anybody, you understand, who has some real love like you did would be feeling the same exact way and dealing with the same battle. And I, too, would have to call a man of God for counsel to talk me off that ledge. So I'm glad that you called mm -hmm. up, brother. Thank you, man. Thank both of y'all, man. I love y'all. Shalom, man. Hey, Shalom. Wait, but before you go, I want to read something else for you, right? This is Ezekiel, sure. the, Ezekiel the 18th chapter, verse 2. It says, What mean ye that use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying the fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge? 
As I live, saith the Lord God, you shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb. Behold, all souls mm. are mine, as the soul of the Father, shall also the soul of the Son is mine. For the soul that sinneth shall die. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right and have not eaten upon the mountains, I'm going to drop down to verse 7, have, have not oppressed any, but have restored to the debt of his pledge, had spoiled none by violence, but have given his bread to the hungry, and have recovered the naked from the garment. Verse 9. If he walked in my statutes and kept my judgments to deal truly, he is just and he shall surely live. Brother, you have the opportunity to live where your brother did not. And a lot of us, hmm. what happens when we lose loved ones in any capacity, it could be from cancer, it could be from gun violence, it could be from anything, suicide, whatever. What usually happens is we die with them and we make it about us. Excuse me, we make it about us instead of making it about them. The greatest thing that you can do is make sure that you take care of his family and your family and then live so that they can have a blueprint. Because if you take vengeance, you're not giving your children a blueprint. You're not even giving them a shot. You're teaching them to do the exact same thing that you did. And what we have to do as fathers, like wh whatever we do, like how old are you? How I'm 51. I'm an old man. As yeah. a 51 year old man you'll never reap the benefits of your life just like me mm. like we'll never truly because we live the life of gang violence we live the life of hustling we live the life of drug dealing but for our mm. children's sake for your children's sake you're supposed to make sure that they have a better life than you everybody that has a life especially oh, fathers don't want their children to have the same life they had i remember my father came right to me as a dope fiend and was like don't you have a life like mine Hey, who, who put up there? Oh, that, I'm sorry. Disregard. Don't have a life like mine. Live a better life than me. If you go out and live that life, you're going to teach your children, your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews to live this life. And you do not hmm. want to do that. You understand? Indeed. Yes, I do. All right. No sweat, brother. That's all I wanted to add before you roll. Lord be with you and your family. Right. Thank you very much, man. No Shalom. Hey, Shalom. Shalom. We got other callers, and there's one other thing to the people that are listening, right? I, I want you to know that's not the first time I've received a call like that. Um, maybe first time we received one publicly, but that happens all the time with us. And to anybody who has experienced that or has received the counsel before, understand that the truth don't change. You know what I'm saying? And that also applies to you if you're somebody out there who wrestles with the same thing. Um, let's hit it. Uh, drop down. Se 706 